Young Frankenstein is one of the greatest comedies ever made. Nay, it's one of the greatest movies ever made. I don't know about y'all, but I'd put it on my top 100 list. Maybe even deserves to be in the top 50. One reason? Young Frankenstein is a masterclass in world building. Or I should say, it's a masterclass of introducing the audience to somebody else's world building. I can attack so I cast. There were a number of prominent organizations who were very outspoken in their criticisms of Mel Brooks's movie, The Producers. A number of individuals from those groups confronted Mel Brooks personally, demanded to know how could he make jokes about National Socialist. They're evil after all. Mel Brooks was unapologetic, defiant. He said, no, the way you defeat evil, you identify it as evil, and then you mock the hell out of it. Evil ideas lose their power when everybody points and laughs. Explains why a number of people these days really don't like to be made fun of. There's more to comedy than eye pokes and silly faces. When done right, it makes you think. It can get you to lower your guard so you're able to think about complex, difficult, even painful ideas. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. When you get past the spectacle of the monster, it deals with some heavy subject matter. The origins of evil, the origins of life, the consequences of messing around with the forces of nature, the dangers of science, how fear affects human behavior. Just a few of the ideas being explored. The universal monster movies of the 30s and 40s took all these ideas that Shelley had presented and wrapped them in the new medium of cinema, visual spectacle using fear as entertainment. The best parodies come from a place of love, reverence for the source material. Mel Brooks and Gene Wilder, they adored the universal monster movies. More importantly, they understood them. They understood how 1931's Frankenstein created its world. They understood its visual symbolism. They wanted to bring the audience back into that world, or as close as they could get some 40 years later. By the early 70s, Frankenstein and the other monster movies had had two lives. There was the original theatric release, and then they were continually being played on VHF and UHF stations all across America. Generations had the experience of being late at night, all the lights off in the house, sitting on their couch with their bowl of popcorn, screaming at the TV screen, don't open that door. Brooks and Wilder wanted to evoke the memories of those experiences, but instead of making you afraid, they wanted to make you laugh. Mel Brooks sets the tone with the opening credits. Right off the bat, the movie is filmed in black and white. This evokes the memories of those earlier monster movies. By clearly referencing the source material, Brooks is inviting comparison. The key word here is memory. Most of our memories are in black and white. Whenever we sit down to watch a black and white film, we intuitively understand we're entering into the world of memory, fantasy, storytelling. We're much more willing to suspend our disbelief. Cinema has lost a great deal of this symbolic power when it switched from black and white to color film. Mel Brooks' use of black and white film came from more than just a desire to copy the source material. He understood the symbolism of black and white film, its power to evoke memory. Mel Brooks was so committed to tapping into the audience's memories, he used the same cameras and the same film that Universal used to create the original monster movies. Humans are the only creatures on Earth that laugh. We don't know why we laugh. We know there are some major health benefits. People who laugh a lot are healthier and live longer. But we don't know why we laugh. And we don't know where humor comes from. One theory argues that humor comes from memory. You take something that somebody knows, and then you twist it subverted in unexpected ways, evoking laughter. Mel Brooks and Gene Wilder use imagery and symbolism to evoke our memories so that we inhabit the world of Frankenstein. And then they start mucking about in that world in very unexpected ways. I go back to the opening credits, the first image, the first symbolism, 
a dilapidated Gothic castle high up on a hill. There's a storm rolling in. We have thunder and lightning. Our mind is already being taken down a well-trod path. We believe, have an expectation, that at the end of that path, we're going to get to meet the monster. The opening scene where we get to meet the young Dr. Frankenstein represents the modern world of science and reason. The space is bright and evenly lit with no shadows. It's neat and tidy, everything in its proper place. It's clean to the point of being sterile. It makes the emotional outburst, the sudden violence, all the more unexpected, shocking, funny. You no good son of a... As soon as Dr. Frankenstein gets off the train in Transylvania, he leaves behind the modern world of science and reason and enters the ancient world of the unknown, of fear. New environments automatically cause stress and discomfort. New environments at night, with its darkness and shadows, layer on steam from the train, fog, and we have a recipe for terror. Dr. Frankenstein acts how we expect he should act, how we would act in a similar situation. He's clearly uncomfortable and nervous as he waits. When he hears the slow, ominous walking, thump, 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 there's a gravelly voice and the lightning strikes. A hunchback appears. Bah! It's frightening. But the moment Igor speaks, we realize we're not supposed to be afraid. We're supposed to laugh. And we're off to the races. I would argue it's this scene. The moment when Igor is introduced is when the parody begins. Everything up to this point has been world building. They're evoking our memories and setting our expectations. It's only after Igor appears when the movie really starts to muck around, subverting our expectations to great comedic effect. Would you like to roll in the hay? Roll, roll, roll. At this point, I have a question for y'all. Why do the horses go nuts every time they hear Frau Brucker's name? The beauty of creating a world based upon the audience's memory, it still holds up even after you start mucking around in it, subverting the audience's expectations. Case in point, everybody knows all castles have secret passages hidden behind old bookshelves. Dr. Frankenstein and Inga know this as well. Their efforts to find said secret passage that everybody including them knows should be there comedic gold put back the candle from a design perspective one of the things i really appreciate about young frankenstein is its attention to detail the image on the left is from 1931's frankenstein the image on the right is from young frankenstein both put the monster through a hole in the ceiling to be struck by lightning as part of the procedure to bring them both back to life it's the little things Again, image on the left, 1931's Frankenstein. Image on the right, young Frankenstein. Both laboratories have the same blinky, spinny, whirly, sparky, oversized equipment you would expect to find in any old mad scientist's laboratory. Both doctors use a large wheel to work the mechanism that raises the monster up through the hole in the roof. If you look closely, a lot of the equipment in both those labs aren't just similar, they're the same equipment. Mel Brooks actually went and tracked down a lot of props from the original movies that he then used in Young Frankenstein. It's the attention to detail. If you're going to be mucking around with people's expectations, you have to be constantly reinforcing those expectations as well. Having said all that, what knockers? Why, thank you, doctor. Yes, my inner 12-year-old is alive and well. At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about. And until next time, you all be safe. If you all are still here, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time. And don't forget, you're welcome to share this video far and wide. Oops, I left the image up. Enjoy! Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.